just going to bring Callum Kerr, I missed him last night uh, and uh, I've now made a video on my discussions with Grant Lees about how vicious his sectioning threat is and how it will be it will be conducted on Friday coming that's three days away now I do not need to take any clothes with me if they assess me as being psychiatrically unstable they have never defined anything that I've done to make me a danger to the public since 2011 since when they first launched the concept I've been walking peacefully around the streets of Kelso and in 2011 when they first introduced it I did not even have a criminal record which they have now imposed on me all of that's described in the video I've made with my son Grant and it is tragic my son Grant has now confirmed that my wife was working for her brother in my home and that she had encrypted my computer he's inspected all of that he's distraught like me about what the government are doing to me to silence me as a political activist I don't need to take my toothbrush everything that I will be forced fed and all of the drugs I will be given in the asylum at Melrose are run by employees of the Scottish Government I applied for Tracy Logan's job Alec Nicholl was the chair of the appointment panel I'm not allowed to talk to any of the three Scottish Borders councillors in this town but Simon Mountford I realised the magnitude of the Mountfords of Leicester yesterday but Simon was the former editor of the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Post now represents us out of Yetton and all of the sad people uh, spend their whole lives debating whether or not the high speed internet and the holes in the road are fixable yeah, all I've reported are massive crimes against the savers, against the investors, against the children which is something that Grant now deeply understands <coughs> anyway, Callum Kerr, yeah, yesterday when I ran Callum Kerr at uh, Callum Kerr's office uh, and I, tr I tried to get to the parliamentary office thinking it was midweek and he would be down there uh, but I got his PA in uh, Gala Shields and she doesn't know what the number is for the parliamentary office isn't that quite strange for a modern day government highly technological the John Lamont's a coward all he's now got is an intranet transfer box <laughs> yeah, on his parliamentary site they do not reveal their details or their contacts because they know that the whole world's aware of their complicity now uh, Callum Kerr could be innocent but the whole world and the world of government and particularly the British government it's all just a set of uh, Muppet instruments to continue stealing from their citizens and their taxpayers and their ratepayers everything we had for free in my generation you now have to pay for <laughs> everything yeah including the water that comes from the heavens <laughs> right then uh, so oh one eight nine six I'm going to gala on Friday morning I will not come back from there if the persecution team have their way with me I will be placed in an ambulance with two policemen inside it for the world's safety <laughs> Hello I, I talked to you last night I think it's George Lees in Kelso uh, Carl, I, unfortunately there's so many people were interested in my sectioning uh, when I walked the pavements of Kelso last night because I had the big notice around my neck saying that one of the local doctors who's a policeman is now in the process of sectioning me and I come to Gala on Friday morning yeah and if I've exposed massive frauds to the Scottish Government is, are you the same girl I talked to the other day? alright yeah Oh, brilliant, because uh, I missed him last night and I wanted to apologise for that and see if there was another chance. Callum's in. And we can chat, maybe.
Callum, hello. Sorry I missed you last night. I was out for a walk and I've got a poster of what's... Every time I go out for a walk in public places, I hang a poster of what's happening to me uh, around my neck. And yesterday it was just a big bold statement saying that the member of the local doctors, who was our school governor, is now trying to section me. His initial attempt to section me was in 2011. And I believe you've got to be a danger to the public. Yeah, and all of that is being enforced against my will. I've reported, as you may be aware, massive scams in the economic and business sector that blight everybody's pensions, savings, uh, and particularly pertinent are the receipts I've received from Michael Matheson, MSP, who's the Justice Minister for Scotland, who received all of my exposures on the Trident nuclear weapon. Have you heard of the Trident nuclear weapon scandal? It, it's not that what I discovered uh, way before the referendum and all of the SNP members had access to that at that time. I'm not sure. Did, were you in another constituency then? All right. It's just that what I disc I'm a fraud researcher and I'm particularly concerned about how British students are now being robbed because I'm a professor in both hemispheres across the globe uh, and all of my children are now in huge debt pools because that's just what the government has opted to do. That was Vince Cable and Michael Moore, your predecessor, who ran the student loans company for the government uh, and uh, funded by Rothschild Bank, but that's an in inverted commas because it is, they are now in a massive debt pool, every one of those English students. Uh, but, but what I'm being persecuted for is my openness and my capacity to expose things that the media will not expose. Because uh, the media is owned by the Chipping Norton set. Are you aware of the Chipping Norton set? Well, when I go to gala on Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, there's a team of head shrinks that have been appointed by two doctors. The doc Dr. Finland, who has pursued me since 2011, when I exposed openly and publicly that he and his colleagues in the Kelso surgery had proclaimed for me as a healthcare worker and as a fellow of the pharmaceutical society, that they are in a compromised position because 40% of the doctor's salary comes from prescribing by volume. Now I'm on the council of the drug safety uh, people in the South Pacific, in Australasia, that's New Zealand's representative on ASCEPT. Yeah, I'm an expert in drug safety and when I came back they treated me really well thinking I'm a kind of celebrity but when I, as soon as I become a fraud researcher and I begin to expose frauds the, the doctor's team turned on me immediately after Alex Salmon's landslide victory and what was a constructive debate on that huge issue that they have to give too many drugs to their patients so that they can earn 40% of their salary. If they drop out of that then they lose 40 grand. <laughs> yeah, And it's a hopeless coercion, coercion position uh, and since they refused to engage any further, the doctor I was talking to was switched to Finland and within weeks I got the sectioning threat. I applied during that, the whole of that period to be the chief executive at the Borders Council. Alec Nicol was the chair of the thing, uh, the selection panel, and all of my stuff, I was working for the Pharmaceutical Society in Edinburgh as a volunteer at the same time as I made those applications and I've been working on political issues ever since. When I go to the hearing on Friday, I'm not allowed to be political. I'm not allowed to declare that I'm a political and human rights activist and I've exposed the massive war crimes of Rifkind and Chilcot and their interlocks and all the reasons why Michael Moore was booted out of the cabinet with nothing on Hansard. He locked me out of the office and refused me meetings and when he did that 
I went immediately to the Gala police station and reported what had happened. All of those are breaches of the UK constitution. Uh, and what they're accusing me of is mental instability because I'm mental enough to tell the truth about why our country is so corrupted and why we're, the whole world is in the sovereign debt crisis. Yeah, so I'm a professor in neuroscience, but the frauds are simple to see through. Uh, and John Lamont, my other representative, has openly proclaimed that I've revealed all of the Lothian Road scams that crash everybody's pensions, everybody's savings, and even the boardroom now. Everybody is being cheated by the financial services institutions. Uh, and the leading union members are now on the court of the Bank of England and all of their workers have had their pay frozen for seven years back to back until I come along and we start making a fuss and publishing all of this online. So I'm a, an out and out activist and that's why I'm being persecuted and I think that's really serious and I'm openly posting all of that all over the social media. I make American interviews loads of times uh, with a number of investigative journalists. They've got a huge global audience and it's going to be really embarrassing uh, for NHS borders if they see this through. Yet yeah, what will happen, because I'm an expert in the sector, is that they will restrain me, they will give me a forced injection of intramuscular drugs and the side effects of antipsychotic drugs are horrendous. I've got an advocate who's worked in the South and she tells me that the wash-in period for those drugs is just a few hours and then you take on a zombie-like state. It's like you see in the movies, you know, the one flew over the cuckoo's nest stuff. Yeah, and the, the half-life of those drugs, once they're into your intramuscular system, they're designed to last for over a month. And even my son last night when we talked, He's prepared to speak out on my behalf, but he's now at university in Dundee, and I can get none of my family to come and represent me. Uh, when I was in the divorce proceedings, my own family members were prepared to come and swear affidavits that my wife is on the right side. My wife, have you heard of Chipping Norton? Yeah, so her brother, <laughs> Her brother lived within three miles of Chipping Norton. Uh, just, I, I intend to speak for myself because everybody else, you know, there's a massive team of people involved in trying to silence me, uh, and and I need to speak for myself because. If, can you imagine what it would be like if I were not allowed to declare what my activities have been that make me the most feared man in this country? Yet yeah, the, the resignation of Stephen House and all of that stuff is all about the cover-up of false news involving the Chipping Norton set. Have you heard of the murder of Moira Anderson? Yeah, she was murdered in, I think it was one of the Glasgow suburbs way back in 1957 uh, and that news was released the same day that Stephen House's pay was raised from £100,000 to £250,000 he got his knighthood the same week and when I started to expose all of the links to Moira Anderson do you remember, you're maybe too young but Moira Anderson was a folk singer in Scotland and she used to she used to sing about the ownership, these are my mountains. <laughs> yeah, Scotland effectively has been dispossessed of all of its mountains now, and it's a huge joke for the Crown that has done that, and every, nothing changes in that big political sector over time. But what the shameful stuff that came out of that was that they launched as cover for it, because I was onto it immediately. When you look Moira Anderson up, on the internet you get the two Ronnies, that's Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Balfour Corbett taking the piss, cross-dressing and singing about Moira and Ken. It's Kenneth Anderson and Moira McKellar. <laughs> yeah, and all of that was launched at the same time as that child murder and then 
what pops up in Parliament Square at the top of the Royal Mile, but a company called Arnott Manderson. Yeah, they employ sheriffs called Greg Halley, Halley, John Halley, to cover up the fact that my investigations with a man called Greg Hallett, who has now been murdered and done away with, uh, he, he exposed the illegitimacy of the British monarchy and all of the rule changes in 2012 as a massive illegitimate fraud. And that's the reason why the two elder people in the royal family were bypassed in favour of, of the children. Yeah, and that's because of royal blood issues and we've got all the evidence on that and all the bloodlines and it's openly posted. Since I posted that, I've become public enemy number one. I've written two or three times to the Queen. The first couple of times were on entirely economic issues, pleading with her to confront <laughs> to confront the corruption. Even even have you heard of Nadim Zahawi? I'm not sure whether he was re elected. But Nadim Zahawi and yeah, Nadim Zahawi and Klaus Moser are massive fraudsters. They've got huge munitions interests under registered re respectively. And Moser's I think he's ninety five or something now, he's the chief statistician for the country, friend of Melvin Bragg. But he's got huge numbers of companies registered in the House of Lords. <laughs> yeah, and he runs the the most expensive schools yeah so so can, can, if I get banged up I would prefer that someone like you would take action and you know I'm gonna litigate against everyone that has persecuted me now for four years this is the Scottish Borders Council right in the middle of your jurisdiction and you can hear how articulate and fluent I am yet yeah, I've made 500 videos yet yeah, all of them expose the crimes against the people all the energy scams I've had my energy shut down in the divorce proceedings my wife has not had her energy shut down our assets have been frozen by Jedbury Sheriff Co Well, they tell me that I will just be bundled. I don't need to take a toothbrush. I will be put in the asylum uniform when I get to Melrose. Yeah? Uh, and and I will try and get the colleague who's taking me there, who's from Northampton but has come up to Scotland, <laughs> uh, and says that she's got lots of experience. I have no idea whether or not she actually has experience, but she uh, seems to understand the process. Uh, but she's advising me not to reveal that I'm an activist because it will sound to them like lunacy. Does it sound to you like lunacy? Even if you have John Anthony Chilcott's director numbers with Malcolm Rifkin But do you believe that Michael Moore and Vince Cable were in charge with the NN Rothschild Bank of stealing from English students en masse? Do you believe that? He was. He was. He was. He was responsible. All the documents are on my website. And you will all regret that, that you're facing the truth in documentary form to silence me. Yeah, and the weight of the issues in Iraq are huge and the weight of the issues in Lothian Road are run by the Rothschilds uh, and they're the people that run all wars, all sides. Yet yeah, they're linked into Auckland and everything I've revealed is published with the director numbers. Yeah, and the images of the boards and all the interlocks. Yeah, everything is published openly and the 500 videos are openly made. But you think that too much knowledge is a danger?
No, it's been, uh, my website's been up there since 2011. So you counsel me just to be submissive, but you're not telling me that I must desist from my investigations. But you would not feel that it was a breach of justice if I was sectioned for my activities on behalf of our society. There are no other grounds and they've been trying to do it since 2011 and I've been upstanding ever since then. Since then, since my divorce, because my wife is from the Chipping Norton region, <laughs> yeah, since my divorce everything has turned, I was not allowed, Ross Dow uh, advised me to plead not guilty on my criminal charge that I got drunk the night of my divorce writ was released into my home and Scotland got beat 55 nil by Wales. I got drunk, okay I got drunk, but what Ross Dow said is that you must plead not guilty. What you've done is uh, simply to chat a girl in a pub, that happens every Saturday night in Scotland. That's Wardlaw and Company, Ross Dow. When I presented that to Sheriff Kevin Drummond, who's got gagging orders on me on talking to the judiciary on that massive Moira Anderson. Where, where is your constituency office? But, but which part of town? Street address, I've got a pen. 46 The High Street. Thanks ever so much, Callum. Bye. So, they cannot do anything because of the weight of Im the information that I have is so large <laughs> that it could not possibly be true. There are no behaviour, and he's saying he's prepared, provided I am submissive, <laughs> yeah, to the panel, yeah who are part of an SS organisation. You cannot see the full listing of the panel. There are three members of that arbitrarily selected. Uh, and I'm going to stop now because the shorter the videos are, the more people can grasp. Yeah, so that's my MP, John Lamont MSP, refuses to engage because I'm still involved in the divorce proceedings. My, my personal advisor from Northampton, who's a lady called Karen, has told me that uh, what will happen is I will just be put in the ambulance with two policemen and all of these crimes I've reported multiple times to the police force and that is now online on Facebook this morning for the whole world to see. Yet yeah, please look at the video that I've posted for my son be in front of this one uh, with my son talking to me compassionately and lovingly from his new place of residence in Dundee University. <laughs> yeah, and all of it is absolutely treasonous. All of the people are being robbed blind and there's only one way to change that. It will not change by the quizzling media writing false news stories or by Callum Kerr and John Lamont fiddling with the holes on the road which is what they're obligated to do, rather than take on any big issues. John Lamont MSP is privy to those secrets in Lothian Road, the Trident secrets, and all of it was revealed two years ago now. I've reported it four or five times to various police offices 
around Scotland, including the gala office for Michael Moore, the same day that he refused me a meeting and he locked me out of his office. <laughs> yeah, huge breaches of the UK constitution and you heard me declare that for Cal. It does not matter to him. All of my stuff bundled together looks like something that is insane. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only honest person in this country and none of the law enforcers are employed to be law enforcers. They're there to allow the criminals to continue with the massive frauds against the people. <laughs> to be pip.